What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can use sticky geometry inside of your SketchUp models in order to make modeling easier. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by PlusSpec. PlusSpec is a powerful extension for SketchUp specifically designed for professional designers and builders. PlusSpec automates not only the design process, but also layers, textures, shadows, scenes, and much more. Everything you draw in PlusSpec is parametric, giving you the freedom to make changes to anything in your model at any time. Additionally, PlusSpec allows you to create priced material takeoffs and 2D plans. Learning is easy with inbuilt tutorials that allow you to create 3D models and 2D plans instantly. If you're looking for more information about PlusSpec, you can check it out at thesketchupessentials.com slash PlusSpec. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the things that makes SketchUp a little bit different from a lot of other modeling programs is the fact that the geometry is sticky, meaning it sticks together um, unless you have your different, uh, unless you have your geometry grouped. And so on the one hand, this can be incredibly annoying, um, especially if you go through and you model like a whole house or something like that and you never group anything. So all your faces are stuck together. So I always recommend keeping your models organized and grouping things as you go. However, that being said, there are some things about sticky geometry and the fact that the ge geometry adjusts and changes as you move it that you can use to your advantage. So I thought I'd make a video about a few different ways that you could do this. So to start off, um, first of all, the one of the easiest ways that you can use sticky geometry in order to create or in one of the easiest ways that you can use sticky geometry to your advantage inside of SketchUp is for using it to create different kinds of shapes. So like for example, let's say that I had this object right here and I wanted to create kind of a tapering face on this side. Well, what you could do is you could come in here and you could figure out where that's going to go and draw an edge out here and then push pull this across and then erase out all this extra geometry in order to create that shape. You can definitely do that, but that's a lot of extra steps. And so an easier way to do this would be to just come in here and if you remember, because all of this is ungrouped, if I select one of these edges, I can just single click using the move tool and just move this outward in order to create a different kind of shape. And so not only would that work for a shape like this one, so I'm gonna make a copy of this real quick, um, not only would that work for creating a shape like this one, if you get smart with this, what you could do is you could actually move multiple pieces of geometry at once in order to create a shape that you want. So you could come in here and create kind of a parallelogram type shape or something like that just by adjusting this geometry. And there's a few different things you could do with this depending on how you wanted this to look. So you can see how this would allow you to create different kinds of shapes really quickly if you don't want to come in here and just draw the geometry manually and then use push pull. And so not only can you use this to create different kinds of shapes like this, you can also use this in conjunction with other tools like the scale tool and able to create things like tapers. So like for example, and we'll come back to this object in a second, let's say you had a table here that had four table legs on it. And let's say you decided you wanted these legs to taper. Well, what you could do is you could select the bottom geometry here and just make a copy of that to kind of split this face. But then you could just come in here and select this face and use the scale tool in order to scale this across. So what you're doing is you're effectively making this base smaller. And so what that does is that automatically adjusts these lines, whoops. And so what that does is that automatically adjusts all the lines that are touching that face, allowing you to create this taper really quickly. And as an added bonus, since I created all of these table legs as components, when I adjust one, the others adjust as well. So you can use this on purpose to select this geometry in these legs in order to create a taper. And so you can also use that to create more complex shapes. Like let's say for example, that you wanted this to kind of curve up in almost like a dome shape. That's kind of hard to do with the follow me tool um, with a shape like this uh, might work, but um, probably a faster way to do this is you could just push pull this face up and then use the scale tool in the same way using uniform scaling. And you could just push pull this up a couple times and then just keep scaling this in like 
this. And what that does is that allows you to create kind of this tapering shape in here. So almost like a dome or something like that. And then you can also, and we'll talk about this more in a second, you could also move these rings up and down. So like, let's say for example, that I felt like this was a little bit too tall. I could use the move tool to select that geometry and move it up and down to adjust the way that this tapers off at the top. And so another way that you could use this is let's say I had a shape like this one and we'll use the follow me tool really quick to create the base. But let's say I selected this face and use the follow me tool here. I could select the top of this face and scale this in like this in order to create kind of a diamond or a jewel shape. So once you kind of understand the way that this geometry sticks together, um, you can actually utilize that to create the shapes that you want. And this is a good time to talk about this. Right now, this is kind of locked to a weird angle in here. Sometimes you get some weird locking things in here where it won't let you move things straight up and down or side to side. Um, this is a good time to use inference locking. And if you remember, inference locking is when you lock something to an axis. So if I select this face and use the move tool to move this up and down, you can see how now this is working the way I want it to. But if for whatever way it won't, or for whatever reason it won't, you can just tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis or you could tap the right arrow key to lock it to the red axis or the left arrow key to lock it to the green axis. So a lot of the time when you're using auto fold and we'll probably have to do this in another example in a second, um, but a lot of the time when you're using this, you're gonna need to use that inference locking in order to get this to work the way you want it to. So another way you can utilize this is not only does this work with uh, the move tool, if you wanna move faces and objects around, it also works with the rotate tool. So let's say I was to push pull this up 18 inches like this, and then let's say I was to take this face, this top face and select it, I could rotate that something like 15 degrees or something like that. And then I could push pull this face up, and then I could do the same thing. I could rotate this another 15 degrees, push pull this up and just keep doing that. And what you're gonna notice, and I will turn on hidden geometry so you can see that, but this is actually uh, moving this geometry along with it, allowing you to create kind of a twisted shape in here. So you can use this to incrementally move things up and rotate them in order to create a twist. And once you get a certain number of these in here, you can start using the move tool in copy mode and just kind of rotating this so that everything lines up. But you could then continue this shape as many times and as many copies as you want. So you can see how by, by utilizing the sticky geometry in here in order to do this, um, you can use this to create this twisted shape. And so another way that you can use the sticky geometry is if you wanna create a quick roof. So um, a lot of the time what we've done is we've come in here and we've drawn a face and then push pulled it across and then you run into issues like this where the, the correct face isn't working and things like that. Well, what you could do instead is if you had this building right here and you wanted to create a roof, you could just draw a line across it. And then you could use the move tool in order to move this line up and down. And you can see how those two edges move along with it, allowing you to quickly create a roof shape. And this is another example of a time when sometimes this doesn't want to move up and down. So if that doesn't want to move up and down, just tap that up arrow key with this active and then click and then that's gonna allow you to move this up and down. So you can use that inference locking to kind of force things to auto fold in here. And so now let's talk a little bit about the practicality of this and some practical uses. And so another thing you can do with this more practically is you can use this to make things taller or shorter. And so like, let's say this is my tiny house model that I created um, for a layout tutorial, but let's say that I wanted to come in here and I wanted to make all of these walls taller. So one thing I could do is I could come in and I could push pull these up 
12 inches and then have to come back in and do that for each individual wall that's definitely a valid option however an easier way to do this instead of having to push pull multiple things because these are multiple faces is I could come in here and drag a box across these so you can see I'm inside the group of the walls are contained but then I could take this and I could move all of these walls up and down at the same time and you can see how because I'm moving the entire top of the wall here um, it's just kind of auto adjust everything that's associated with that so you don't have to do anything more complex than just typing in a value and hitting the enter key so you can use this to make things taller or shorter really quickly and so in addition to that practically this also allows you to move things around like walls without having to do a whole lot of extra like um, adjusting of geometry and things like that so let's say for example that I wanted this wall to be we'll call it 12 inches further back here so once you've drawn this wall if you didn't know about the way to do this what you might be in here trying to do is you might be in here trying to erase out different tops of walls and things like that and then adjusting the base down here and then push pulling it up again and it just kind of gets messy but let's say you just wanted to move just this wall 12 inches this way well what you could do is you could select all of the geometry that makes up the edge of this wall then you could use the move tool and you can just move it over and so practically speaking you can see how because this is sticky geometry wherever I move this wall the associated lines are gonna move with it so I could just move this over one foot and then all I have to do is just take this door and just move it back into place so it's really quick without having to redraw or redo a bunch of things or anything like that another place where this can be really helpful is when you're creating window openings inside of walls so like for example right now let's say that I've come in here and I've created a door opening and a window opening let's say I have these in the wrong place and let's say this is all group geometry so let's say this is all in a group and I've drawn my window in the wrong place well what you might be tempted to do is you might be tempted to kind of like try to erase out this hole in the wall and then come back in here and redraw it and re push pull it and all of that and and you don't need to do that because when you push pulled this opening in this window or in this wall to for this window what you did is you created a bunch of geometry in that wall well that wall or that geometry you can actually move it around inside of that wall so even if I'm outside of this group I can just double click inside this group and let's say I wanted to move this window six inches here and then make it a little narrower and you could probably use push pull in order to make it a little bit narrower but you could also select it and use the move tool in order to move it over another six inches or something like that and that's going to work for basically any opening so like for example for this one I could just select this door opening and I could move this around to wherever I want it to be as well so that means you're not stuck redrawing things you're able to actually move these things around and so the last example that I want to use for this is this is a model from a laundry room model that I did a while ago on the channel well one of the things that happened when I was doing this is this table that's in here that's grouped right here was too narrow so if I recall correctly I think it was about right here and it needed to be wider to fit the uh, it needed to be wider to fit the washer dryer that we're gonna be in here and so you can see how I've got it modeled in here as its own group but I can just click inside of this group and I can actually take this and select this whole wall or all of the associated edges with this wall and I can move this around in order to make this wider or thinner and so what ended up happening is this needed to be a little bit wider so uh, I think it was probably right here or something like this well I just took this geometry and selected it and without having to redraw or anything like that I was able to just move this over along the green axis until it lines up with the point that's currently in here so with just enough space that we can fit our washer dryer unit in here so you can see how I was able to use that to adjust this without having to redraw or redo anything like that so this is really good for fine adjustment of things that you've already created that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using sticky geometry to help you in your models? Are there some uses I didn't think of? Let me know in the comments down below. 
If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.